Hi guys, and welcome to Dino Gem, a place to learn, discuss, and marvel at everything paleo and geo related. In this series, we'll be going through all of the various time periods throughout the Earth. Today, we'll be learning about the very origins of our planet. But first, let's quickly revise just how the ages of the Earth are divided. Now this may be the longest video, but I'd like to make sure you guys understand what I'll refer to in later videos. The largest division of the Earth's age is known as an eon. We are currently in the Earth's fourth eon, known as the Phanerozoic. But before that was the Proterozoic, Archean, and even before that, the Hadean. The Phanerozoic is the only eon in which further divisions are discussed. As to why, we'll get onto that. But this is divided into the Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic. These are divided into the most well-known parts, periods. These consist of the Cambrian, all throughout other periods through to the Cretaceous and finally ending on us, the Quaternary. Whilst those periods are divided up yet again into epochs, it is only really the Cenozoic era that the epochs within the periods are worth mentioning and can be easily distinguished and is normally what paleontologists and geologists refer to when discussing the Cenozoic. There are further divisions, but we won't worry too much about those just yet. Lots of big words, but trust me, you'll get the hang of this quickly. Dating the Earth is a task that becomes more and more difficult the further back we go. It is often why we refer to much more specific time slots the closer to modern day that we get. For example, when we're referring to parts of the Cenozoic era, we often refer to specific epochs of a period, as said before, as this is much easier to zone in on the rocks of that age. As we go further back into the Mesozoic and Paleozoic, however, paleontologists and geologists will normally just refer to the period of that era, for example the Jurassic, Triassic, Permian, etc. It is when we go beyond the Cambrian that things tend to get a lot more hazy. This is because so much time has passed and the many movements of the blender known as Earth has messed up our picture. Whilst there are many theories surrounding the origin of the Earth, some religious, some scientific, we will be discussing the most widely accepted within geology and its community. It all begins approximately 4.6 billion years ago, during which our sun was surrounded by little more than dust. But how did this dust form planets? Well, it's thanks to static electricity. An example of this was in 2003 on board the International Space Station when an experiment was conducted on how things behave in zero G. It was found that when grains of salt are allowed to simply float in the air, they tend to attract one another through static electricity and form clumps. In theory, that dust surrounding the sun could do the same thing and given enough time, those clumps could get pretty big. Soon, we have a giant rock full to the brim of elements and minerals, and so begins the Hadean. With a planet-sized object comes a hell of a gravitational pull. The Earth began pulling in other clumps from the surrounding area, many of which contained hot, destructive, and even radioactive elements, resulting in the constant barrage of meteor impacts lasted millions of years. Such high energies over such a long period of time meant that the earth went from a giant rock to a giant ball of molten lava. Given the hellish conditions, geologists named this time the Hadean, after the Greek god of the underworld. This melt was a very important event as it allowed certain materials more freedom to move and in turn separate. Eventually, the denser elements such as iron and nickel mostly sank to the centre, forming the core, and the lighter elements and minerals floated just above, giving us a mantle. The crust formed from that mantle over another million years or so, thanks to the Earth being exposed to the freezing vacuum of space. As the activity slowed down since the surrounding material had already become part of the Earth, these cold temperatures started to solidify the outside of the mantle. Things were starting to look like they would calm down, until something pretty big came knocking. 
It is theorised that another planetary body, roughly the size of Mars, impacted the Earth around this time. Rather than a direct strike, however, it was a glancing blow, chipping off a sizeable chunk of the Earth and throwing that chunk into orbit. That chunk is now the Moon. This theory was further solidified when a piece of moon rock was brought back and studied, having been found to have the same composition of the Earth's mantle. Once the Earth recovered from this impact, the next important stage occurred, water. Water is actually thought to be an extraterrestrial addition to the Earth, being brought in from icy meteorites that were still bombarding Earth at this time. This is evidenced by meteorites containing traces of water that have actually been dated from before the birth of our planet. Enough impacts from meteorites like these eventually spread water further and further around the Earth, cooling it and covering around 70% of the planet. Around the same time, four billion years ago, small proto-continents began forming, along with shallow subduction zones of the Earth's crust, meaning that the early stages of something completely unique to Earth that we know of, was beginning. Plate tectonics. But that is a topic for next week. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you've taken a lot from today's video. Please don't forget to like and comment your thoughts and questions, and be sure to subscribe and tap the notification bell so you never miss a video. Until next time.